Well, Rod, you may remember yesterday we talked to a consumer lawyer uh, because the whole issue of arbitration came up. Arbitration where as a condition of getting a service, as a condition of renting an apartment, as a condition of going to see a doctor, before you get to rent that apartment or before you get to see that doctor, you have to sign a piece of paper very often and more and more often anymore that if a dispute comes up, you are forced to go to an arbitrator and you may no longer go to court. Well, this consumer lawyer uh, was agreeing with me that that's probably not a perfect system. Everybody ought to be allowed to have access to the court. Today, I want to talk to an arbitrator, James Elegante. He is uh, certified by the American Arbitration Association. And James, welcome to the program this afternoon. Thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure to be with you. First of all, certified by the American Arbitration Association, what does that mean? Uh, the American Arbitration Association uh, scours the land for uh, people that it calls neutrals, that it would like to have on its roster of neutrals to handle arbitration. Okay. And it's by invitation only, so when you get an invitation from the American Arbitration Association, you can go and attend their, their boot camp for arbitrators. Um, it's a two-day long uh, event, and once you have successfully completed that, uh, you can be certified and begin to receive assignments from the American Arbitration Association. Now, you are a, you know you have a lot of experience. You're a lawyer. You're a litigator. I can see why someone like you would be a qualified arbitrator. Can anybody be an arbitrator? Yes, the American Arbitration Association does go to non-lawyer professionals in certain areas. For example, uh, in the construction industry, there's an entire separate roster of, of non-lawyer uh, engineers, construction professionals of all types who do serve as arbitrators. That's also true in the medical profession. Actually, there are hospital administrators who act as arbitrators for other hospitals, of course, because they have such depth of knowledge about how hospital uh, hospitals work. Now, what do you think of this? I'm calling it forced arbitration as a condition of getting a service, as a condition of renting an apartment or going to a doctor, one of a number of things. If a dispute arises, I pre-agree before I get this service that if a dispute comes up, I will go to an arbitrator. Uh, Bill, in Utah, the um, the medical profession cannot force you to arbitrate as a condition of of giving you service. It, it although it, the doctor can refuse to give you service if you don't agree, but it, so that's a little separate. But in in other circumstances involving consumers, um, it's the decision of the service provider. Uh, it's just like the sign in the in the restaurant that says "No shirt, no shoes, no service." Yeah. Uh, and you can count that the the uh, seller of that service, the service provider, has figured out that somehow or other this is going to save money for him. Now, it, does it? Well, okay, but uh, does it save money for a consumer? I mean, what what what's the advantage of arbitration over court or vice versa? It really does. Most consumers, it's the David and Goliath story. Most consumers just don't have the money to go out and hire a lawyer and go through a long civil litigation matter for uh, for something that a corporation would consider small but the consumer might consider big so in the long run it really is advantageous to consumers to cut out all of the the courts the delays the cost for attorneys and just go right to arbitration i know but what if i want to go to court i mean it it, it seems to me that these sometimes these companies are setting up arbitration because they know the opposite is true from what you said. They're going to, that is, the business is going to wind up doing better than I'm going to do as a consumer. Well, the, the cost advantage is, is just really clear to everybody, but I don't think it can be said that a business can can say in advance that it's going to do better in an arbitration than the consumer is. Well, there's a conflict of, a, a potential conflict, is there not? Well, uh... There is, but it's it's really quite easy because if, if I mean, this, you might assume, for example, that uh, a certain business might send many arbitration cases to the same arbitrator. That I would. Could, that could happen, but uh, the the consumer always has the right on the front end to ask the arbitrator to disclose his uh, potential conflicts of interest, and this is 
this is a very important matter. Arbitrators who are skilled know that they have to give deep disclosures and thorough disclosures, because if they don't, that's a reason to set aside an arbitration decision, and nobody wants that. What if I don't like the decision of the arbitrator? What if I'm a consumer or a business, and I don't like the decision of an arbitrator? Well, that is the one disadvantage in a sense. You're, you're stuck with the decision of the arbitrator, and uh, unlike the court system where you might get several bites at the apple through appeals, with the arbitration you only get one bite at, at the apple. No such thing as an appeal, unless you can demonstrate, for example, that the arbitrator has failed to disclose a conflict of interest to you. Are you finding people are generally satisfied with arbitration? I mean, there must be people who are not, but what are you finding? No, people are very much satisfied with arbitration. The decisions, arbitrators generally bend over backwards to be careful and render thoughtful decisions, and when people tally up the dollars, uh, they, they're happier than if they had gone to court. James Eleganti, a certified arbitrator by the American Arbitrator, Arbitration Association, I hugely appreciate you taking a few minutes with us this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. It was a pleasure. All right, James. Uh, okay, Rod, there you go. Now we have all sides of this story.